Welcome back to the realm of unpopular opinions. Today I will be doing the mid-year <clears throat> book tag in August <laughs> because I did not film, the, film this in July. I was going to when I was on vacation but then I didn't. So nothing more to be said here. This isn't like a wrap-up where I tell you everything that I've read in the last seven months now. This isn't where I tell you everything about the books that I read. This is just where I answer certain prompts. This is a tag for a reason, but I will, as a preface, disclaimer, whatever the word is at this point, I am a little brain fried. I read a lot of manga. Like this year, most of the stuff that I read was manga. So there will be a lot of that. I am saying that as a warning because I mostly talk about books and of course manga are books but not in the sense that it's mainstream like books are. So just as a warning I will be talking about a lot of manga and if that's not your thing then I get it. You should give it a chance <laughs> but I get it. I absolutely get it. So that's just a little bit of a disclaimer. Aside from that let's just get into the video. This is not going to be three hours long. This isn't a wrap up as I already said. Let's just get into it. The first one is best book you've read so far this year. I am a little sad that I can't hold it up because I just bought the box set. But we're just going to roll with it. Tokyo Ghoul, the manga. It's by far the best thing that I read this year. <laughs> like, it's become very quickly one of my favorite anythings. Like, not just my favorite manga or anime, one of my favorite everything's like I'd put it in a list with my favorite books for sure I didn't think I'd fall in love with it that much because I watched the anime first didn't get anything <laughs> that was going on but then I read it and Sui Ishida is an author where you really even if it's not true always you really get the sense that he knows what he wants I keep getting interrupted by the kitten. Anyway, he's an author who's really intentional and you get the feeling that he planned it out. He Tokyo Ghoul is a manga that has two halves. Like the first half has 14 volumes, the second has 16, and it is all one big story. I have never in my life been so happy with an ending because I fell in love with all of the characters, which is also like a trademark of all my favorite things. I fell in love with all of the characters and I cared for all of them. Like I could name so many side characters whose fates I cared about. And in the ending, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I was really, really happy with the ending. I was so happy with the ending. I was reading like the last couple of volumes that night and I sobbed. I literally sobbed while reading. The last chunk. Why do I look scared? Because the kitten is climbing. Climbing. Anywho. I sobbed in the ending out of sheer happiness. Which last time that happened was with Winter of the Witch. It's a story about humans and ghouls coexisting in Tokyo. That's literally what it's called, and I would recommend it to literally everyone because Sui Ishida is a combination of an author of a person that knows how to write characters, but he also draws beautifully. I already said that I bought the box set, but I plan to buy like a book of just his drawings and interviews with him because he has swiftly become one of my favorite authors. So I will tie this in with <laughs> another prompt from later, which is new favorite author, definitely Sui Ishida. Anything that he does, I am going to read. I am going to read because it was the best thing that I read this year and by far the best of all the mangas that I read. By far. So once I collect it, I will do another bookshelf tour and you will see it heavily featured. And here we have the Lord and the Savior, the One-Eyed King, <laughs> Ken Kaneki on my shelf. He is currently in front of The Witcher, but when I get the volumes, he will be in front of that. The next prompt is best sequel you read this year, and need I say it, I won't hold it up for too long because it's heavy, but here we go. In case you're skipping around, there. I read Children of Dune this year. I read both of the first books last year. 
It took me so long, as I already said multiple times in several videos, to read the Dune series, but it was worth it. I loved it. I It paid off in ways that I didn't expect, and it was very satisfying, while also very rewarding to get through, because you feel like you've really gone through a journey with these people, and... I loved it. It was definitely the best sequel I read this year. I think it's one of the only sequels that I read this year, but by far deserves this spot. I adored it. I will eventually read it again, and a trilogy that is extremely worth it. That is all I will say because I've ranted about Dune quite enough. Next prompt is biggest disappointment of this year, and I'm not even going to pretend. Attack on Titan. Not this volume. I'm just holding it up because the chunk of this series that is disappointing, I don't own. So I'm just holding this up. It's actually one of my favorite covers. But Attack on Titan. I finished it <laughs> this year. Started and finished it this year. When I started reading Attack on Titan, I think it was like three chapters from the end. So in February, March, and April, I was waiting for the releases. And I hated it. <laughs> There's a reason why I only own till volume 22. So make, make of that what you will. Without any spoilers, I was just really disappointed by how lame it felt. By how unplanned. Not all of it. I'm definitely not saying he didn't plan all of it. But the entire second chunk feels like fan service. It feels like he had something in mind that he originally wanted to do, but then he went online and started reading fan opinions, and he went with that, which I absolutely hate with authors. Like, grow a spine, don't actually read comments and see who's the fan favorite character, and then try and work a story around the fact that you can't kill them off. If you were going to kill them off, then kill them off. Because what we got was unsatisfying, disappointing, at a lot of times jarring, and it just sort of, like, <laughs> killed my interest in the whole story because at the beginning of this year, I was obsessed with it. And now, to be very honest, even though I still love, love the volumes that I do have, I made vlogs about them, and I still love the show, I don't feel as obsessed as I did at the beginning of the year because just like everything that you know has a bad ending. There are some things where you can pretend that it ended, like I do with this, but you still know that the ending was bad. Like, you, in the back of your head, you still know what kind of bullshit the characters have put through because you read it. So, in a way, it did kill my obsession for it, which I was a little sad about back in April, but what are you gonna do? On another note, there's like a fan ending coming out and I read the beginning of that. It's already better. So yeah, Attack on Titan, definitely the biggest disappointment because of how high or how strong my obsession was. I think that's why I was way too disappointed. But yeah. Next one is biggest surprise and this one's going to be a bit of a cop out. I understand. But it needs to be said. It was my biggest surprise how much I hated this book I know it should be in disappointment but it's not the same I was disappointed with Attack on Titan I was actually genuinely surprised by how much I hated this book in comparison to the first one I don't think I've ever talked about this yet on my channel I don't think so but this is again the sequel to Crown of Feathers, which I loved. I gave it five stars. I genuinely loved it. I cried several times. I really enjoyed the animal aspect of it. Then book two came along, which by the way, it's a lovely, lovely floppy edition. It is ridiculously long <laughs> and nothing happens. Nothing happens in it. The animal thing is pushed aside. The villain isn't at all believable, and frankly, they're a little stupid. The romance is amped up, and the ending, I read before I bought this because I was waiting for it. 
that the ending is oh my god it's such a cliffhanger that you won't be able to wait wait for book three i could have told you the book would end like this since book one since book one not one thing in here was shocking or a twist or even interesting i can't believe i finished it to be very honest <laughs> But I was so disappointed because my, like, it was like I, this was how much I liked book one and this was just book two. I was honestly so surprised by how much I didn't like it. And I will not be buying book three. Book three came out, like, last month. I have no interest in buying it ever. <laughs> like, ever. I, it's very rare, very rare for me to get this far into a trilogy and not get the ending. I couldn't care less. <laughs> In fact, I don't want to read it because I already know I will be annoyed. So yes, this was a surprise because of how much I liked book one. I think I gave that five stars. I'm not sure what I gave this. It has to be below three because it wasn't average. It was below average. Like such a let down and a glow down and I disliked it. And I am just surprised because, as I said, it never usually happens. I either love the first book and then I read the rest, or I dislike the first book and never continue. I cannot believe I'm not going to complete a trilogy, but I am not. So, yeah, this was the biggest surprise for me this year because I had a roller coaster with this series. Next one is release you're looking forward to now. As you probably know and have noticed, I don't read new releases. I genuinely don't don't read new things because i don't like reading something that i would have to wait a lot for i don't like that i like going through a backlog and finishing stuff that's already done and have been long done or recently finished i don't don't like picking up <laughs> the first book without knowing at least how many books there will be and when they're coming out so the one thing i will say is chosen x chosen x i'm not sure how to pronounce it Chojin X. Chojin X. Anyway, the new manga series by Sui Ishida. We have already covered that I love him now. I think chapter one is out. I read it. <laughs> loved it. I would love everything that this man puts out. So Chojin X, whenever he decides to continue it. Next prompt is a fun one. Newest fictional crush. Now for that, I actually have some answers. Again, half of them are from manga or anime. But it's just that kind of year, so we're going to have to deal with it. Uh, but let's do a book one first. Gilbert Blythe. Like, I was in love with him for years. <laughs> years and years. Since I first learned of the story, watched the show. I ran out of Green Gables as a kid. I just didn't remember it. But I loved Gilbert then, too. But Book Gilbert. Because this year, I was exposed to Book Gilbert. That's what I'm going to have to say. I love him. I genuinely love him. For that time period, he was the supreme. I I have nothing else to say. I adore him. He is the blueprint. And <laughs> he just stands up there. Not with Mr. Darcy because he isn't that prominent of a character. But he's up there. <laughs> like, he is genuinely up there. And aside from that, I f my two favorite fictional crushes of all time were added to my collection this year. I say that like I'm this grandmaster of fictional men but <laughs> obviously Levi Ackerman because this year I was exposed to Attack on Titan and that was not good for me because I saw Levi Ackerman I was sufficiently obsessed with him for like two months I'm not obsessed with him anymore but I rationally love him and I think we would we are pretty much the same person we would just have the best time together <laughs> But I also met my number one, like, actually, like, skyrocketed to the list of, in general, fictional crushes, not just anime. And that would be Osamu Dazai from Bungo Stray Dogs. I don't need to say anything else, I think. If you know who he is, I don't need to say anything else. I finally found a fictional crush who is genuinely compatible with me. Not just, like, I like them, but... He is compatible with me. This is going to sound stupid, but personality-wise, MBTI test-wise, horoscope-wise, we would just be the perfect couple. <laughs> and he is literally my number one. Now, I am still obsessed with him, even though I watched the show. 
over a month ago and I have an ungodly amount of pictures <laughs> in my in my phone so those are the three fictional crushes that I picked out for this half of the year we will see if we get some new ones but I could also say like a lot of people from Tokyo Ghoul like Kaneki and Ayato but I have this weird thing where I don't have crushes on characters with their own love interest so yeah we're not gonna count them for today newest favorite character this is a little different than crush so I could go again like Kaneki, Aaron Yeager, and <laughs> and Shirley but we're not gonna repeat ourselves too much so we're gonna say Leto and Ganima Atreides from Children of Dune. I didn't think I'd like them when I started reading the book because I hate it when the protagonist shifts like when the main POV shifts but I fell in love with them. I literally adored reading from their perspective. At one point I thought I would also find it a little boring to read from Leto's perspective and not Ganima's but I loved them both. I genuinely love them both. This comes from a person who whose favorite character is and was Alia. <laughs> so yeah, Leto and Ganima surprised me as being my new favorite characters because I thought I would really mind that I have to read from their perspective now, but I didn't at all. I loved it and don't be discouraged <laughs> if you get to Children of Dune because you will love them. Just give it a little time. We're gonna combine two into one because I have already pretty much covered it, but I have one book for both. Book that made you cry and book that made you happy. Somehow, Anne of Avonlea was both. This is a pretty small edition. Anne of Avonlea was both. It made me extremely happy. It was like a boost of serotonin because it's so happy and positive and funny. But it made me cry at certain points because it, she has the ability to like touch your soul in a way that you just start crying there's no rational reason for this i think i cried in the ending too but i cry like a couple times throughout when there's a, when there's a topic that like hits hard or hits close to home or something anne of avonlea fits both literally i read it very quickly when i picked it back up again and i went through just a, like a roller coaster of emotions this should, should just be like a pick me up but then somehow i also cried so this fit this prompt perfectly and i wanted to just show off the edition because it's so cute and like look so cute and pretty and golden edges and bookmark i love it but yeah it fits both and i don't want to touch upon it again because i already mentioned that i cried for a lot of other stuff if i cry about a book it's a good book that's my indicator What's the prettiest book that you bought this year? I could argue <laughs> that it's the Tokyo Ghoul box set that I just ordered because I paid like 160 euros for it. It better be pretty like it is on the picture. But we're not gonna use that, that book for today. We're gonna use this book because I got it for my birthday or rather bought it for my birthday, but it is freaking gorgeous and I will talk about it a bit more. It has golden edges. It all the detailing is just lovely. <laughs> I this book I bought because I wanted to buy a collection of poems by Robert Frost, but then I found this instead. I love Greek mythology. Egyptian mythology and Norse mythology are my favorites, but I love Greek mythology. I always loved it. And it's written, I've already, like, I have a notebook where I, where after I read a story, I, like, summarized it as I read it. It's pretty cool and a project that I recommend doing. It's pretty fun. But they're so easy to read and they're written in a way that they are actually so interesting and not that difficult to read. Let me see who did it. <laughs> Does it say who translated it? Okay, two people. Anyway. <laughs> also, the end pages. It's written in a way that is so understandable and easy to digest even if you don't like classical writing. So I recommend it. Highly and I adore. I have one more prompt which will be quick. Worst book you read this year. I genuinely think it was Uprooted which I read last month. I'm not even going to talk about it anymore but I think that was the lowest rated book this year. Now what other books you need to read by the end of the year? Obviously everything that I haven't read I don't really like setting goals like I better read this by the end of 2021 or I am a failure 
but I do have some that I would like to get to. Ink Heart, for example, I would love to get to this. I loved the movie as a kid and my mother read all three books, so I was always a little bit interested. Also, that's over there, like the collection of Robert Louis Stevenson. I would love to read more Stevenson. Last year I read Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and that's my favorite classic now. I would love to read more because he's a classic writer who knows how to summarize. He doesn't just go on and on and on and on just to get money. He summarizes everything perfectly and you get his point. <laughs> exactly. I also want to finish Star Wars, Star Wars Legends books. I bought two before I went on holiday. What else? I mean, obviously my TBR, like <laughs> the entirety of my TBR would be great. I am going to try and work through it very soon. And the rest of the Anne, Anne of Green Gables books. I want to finish the ebook that I have so that I know which books I should buy. Aside from that, I don't think I have any other goals. And that is it for the tag portion. That wraps up this tag. I'm pretty sure it was kind of boring for you. Because this year I, it seems like I read a lot because on Goodreads it's a, a line, large number, large number, high number. I cannot speak, but that's because I read a lot of manga and then I read a lot of manga again. Like I read a lot of manga twice, like Attack on Titan. I think I read something else. Anyway, I read a lot of manga this year and that really amps up your score. And I did a lot of rereads, which I don't really count because I don't want to do rereads and tags because it's not new books but there's some other stuff that I always want to include and talk about so I will find a way like for example my Wheel of Time reread I would love to include somehow and I want to reread Ursula Le Guin or even continue I want to read more Earthsea so stuff like that but I really don't know how to in what context to <laughs> mention it so aside from that this is it for the tag I hope you didn't find it too boring even if you don't read manga I try not to go on too long about it but I still hope this gave you sort of a rundown for how my year was going and frankly the manga has been rescuing me because it's there's a lot of it so I wouldn't say it's quick to read there's a lot of it like all the series usually have like hundreds of chapters but it's really easy to digest because I've not really been in a high fantasy mood for some reason. So having manga in between of in between everything has really been helping me with reading this year. And yeah, again, I hope you didn't find it too boring. Let me know what was the best and worst book that you read so far this year. And hopefully this tag did not come way too late because that would be embarrassing, for example, if I did it in like September. But anyway, now I am just, just rambling. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next video.